Where we last left off on this 2003 Spirit, we just ripped off the roof. I went to go get supplies, and so let's check in on it. All right, so this is a 2003 Winnebago, or 2003 Itasca Spirit Class C motorhome. It's on a Ford chassis. If you guys remember, the roof was uh, delaminated a little bit. Winnebago builds a very unique roof design. It's closer to what I would call a SIP structural insulated paneling because it's just eighth inch luon paneling the styrofoam eighth inch luon paneling all laminated together and that's the entire roof structure there really isn't any sort of uh framing within the foam so it's really just a big surfboard and so once all that delamination happens it's very very weak and also we're missing that big chunk right there now hopefully i try to explain why you can't just switch this over to a membrane roof or a rubber roof very easily because you'll have to manufacture roof radiuses on the side and change out the molding on the uh, outside and then uh, we'll still have to redo this deck because yeah it's bad of course you could put thicker decking on at that point so we did go ahead and rip everything off uh, the only thing that's left up here is this is a roll-on silicone type of coating it's kind of popular now on RVs. So they use that to, I guess, protect the exposed decking, Luon material, from water damage. But I don't know if you guys can see, you can see the styrofoam really well under there. So it wasn't great weatherproofing, so you could get water in there really easily. And while this stuff really did seem to adhere pretty well, you can see it stuck pretty well right there. Where this big seam was right there, where the fiberglass was loose and water got behind it, it uh, didn't stick to that very well at all. Now if I fill this part back, you see it did stick to the wood, so it wasn't a failure of the adhesive, it was a failure of the plywood. It does bring up a little bit of concerns that if uh, you're putting on this coating to fix a, a roof leak and you don't fix that leak, Possibly the coating's not going to do much over time, which is why I'm still a big fan of replacing the roof uh, Because chances are you're doing a coating because there's a roof leak and you need to find out why it's leaking And if there's any damage exposed rather than just doing a band-aid on top And it's a pretty expensive band-aid this roll on roof coating I also thought you guys might get a kick out of uh, the amount of silicone that was used to fill the gap on the radius right there uh, My next step at this point so I just need to clean up this edge right there, which isn't going to be too much of work. Because I can just cut through that right there. It's a little bit of work, not too much work. But then I also need to make sure this channel right there is nice and clean. It's easier to do it now before we have the uh, fiberglass roof on because it sticks out over there and it's hard to get your hands back in there. The next problem is, you guys remember, there's a lot of loose screws. That connects the this is the interlocking sidewalls to roof that Winnebago is so proud of. Come around right here. You can see the extrusion on the sidewall and how it interlocks with the extrusion on the roof itself. So this is uh, pretty much the only real framing in the roof itself. You can kind of see it right there. Uh, Luon foam. This bow right there is really just a mount for the fiberglass cap. Uh, it only goes back to right where that ends there. So it's not very structural. Otherwise, there's not any real framing in there. So I need to uh, tighten up, or at least replace all these screws too. Yes, I'm fully aware there's no slide out toppers on this. They were aware of it when they bought it. But I'm here, I might as well take the remnants of the fabric out. Because why not? So I'm just over here cleaning off the front cap a little bit and I'm just noticing something now. There's masking tape here, and this is not masking tape Winnebago would use. This is masking tape that a body shop would use. And uh, you can see the splatter of glue right there. Somebody rewrapped this front cap. That's why that front cap itself was off and why they put long screws in it. They messed up. So it's hard to see, but that's the original phylon right there. This is a new phylon that they added. So somebody's done even more work to this. Very interesting. Just thought I'd share that 
fun information. Now, although the owner said not to worry too much about the holes in the front cap, I could not let that go and just put gobs of sealant on it. So at the very least, they're gonna repair where the uh, previous repair was done and all the little cracks and holes from the wrong screws being used on this front cap. And then they'll paint it. They're doing a fast, quick job for me. It'll still look a miles better than globs of silicone right there to seal off the holes. And I'll feel a lot better about it too. All right, so all of this filler wasn't stuck to anything. Maybe not a full tube, but a decent chunk of a tube. That's just silicone. Same stuff you get at Home Depot, and they used a piece of aluminum, I guess, to act as a bridge. Okay. Well, that was pretty simple. But yeah, this is a nice channel, so any water getting in there was getting in there anyways. Any water getting in here was getting all the way down the roof anyway, so really none of this did anything. If they were going to do this, they needed to manufacture a, some sort of a cap right here, seal it down using maybe some Eternabon or some other sort of tape, and then put the coating on it. But they didn't want to put that effort into it. They were just hacking it. I know that's not a nice thing to say, but this is a hack repair. They knew it was a hack repair. It was just get her done repair and hope for the best. It's very disappointing that somebody sold that to somebody else without disclosing it. Now, even though I think I could tighten these screws up, and they're all loose for a reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace these with a little bit bigger screw. Besides, these are really useful screws for me to keep. In this place, I'll just be using these number 12 3 quarter inch long screws. They are exterior grade, I guess. They're just wood screws. So I'll be replacing all of these on both sides because that could also be a problem if the roof was very loose and flopping about too. So all those have been replaced all the way up. I did the ones on the other side too. Because those are just as loose. Okay, so believe it or not, it may not look like it. I did clean out all the track right there. I just need to clean off the roof. I did scrub all of this so that we're going to be all nice and clean. So I just have to blow all this off. So the next step is to rip, rip up this uh, decking. If you guys have followed this channel before, you know you just grab it and pull up on it. It does separate from the foam fairly easily. start replacing the deck but I do have to do one thing first all these the bedroom vent and the bunk vent right there we're gonna upgrade to powered vent so I have to run some wiring because there's no wiring already routed in here uh, this right here is wiring going to the closet light closets right there it's got my wiring right there Right in there, you can see my first bunch of wires that were coming down. I just switched power for this light over here, which we have ground and power. So that, that'll work out pretty well. Basically make a channel from here over to here, and I can just lay in some wiring. That way I can actually have 12 volt to this harness right there. And then for this one, it's not too much different. Winnebago prepped this area right here for a crank up satellite dish. And part of that crank up satellite dish had wiring for an elevation display. And so there's the uh, the power for it. 
I can just tap into there and then I have a channel run all the way to that vent too. Okay, so I just cut that off. And I'll just wire this up. Well, there's many ways doing this. I'm just gonna be using a uh, unit bit right here to... route out a channel. so much easier to do when there's not a roof in the way. I know what some of you might be asking is why don't I use a wiring right here that goes to this ceiling light. That's switched from the wall so in order for me to have power there the wall switch would have to be on which is not ideal so that's unswitched power and that's why I want to go to that one. And this wire I don't need to hook it up currently because the connections are going to be in the closet where I can get the ground and power hooked up. I'll just pre-wire it from this point there. I was gonna run a channel right there, but then I said, hey, you know what? It's a perfect groove for it right over to here. All right, here I guess. I guess that should be long enough. Okay, so well, at any rate, the next step we need to glue it down. This is the contact adhesive we're using. This is the best one I've found. It's quite expensive. This is Stabon 183. I'm gonna put that in. Just a throwaway gun, so I don't feel bad if it gets destroyed. We spray both surfaces, both the both the eighth inch Luon paneling. So we'll spray one side of it, and then of course the foam itself. And then it's a contact adhesive. As soon as you touch it down, it kind of welds itself together. You have to do it when it's a little bit tacky, not wet. And then we'll roll it out to keep it tight. We'll be doing it basically one section at a time because this is a shorter roof. I don't have to really brace it on the inside. Whereas the more modern Winnebago's seem to need extensive bracing because they're all falling apart. Uh, this is an older one and we should be okay. And so we'll do that basically one panel at a time. So we have a whole new deck on here, and then we'll roll out the new Phylon material. Of course, the most important thing to remember is this 183 red. This is the styrofoam safe glue, so we don't want to use any glue that's going to melt styrofoam. Yeah. Hey, Juan, don't worry. I won't use long screws on it when I put it back together. Come cover your deck inside. I see. Wow! He even fixed it on the inside. We're definitely high speed with this one. Muchas gracias. Okay, bro. Woo. Don't worry, guys. I am covering all these openings right here with some cardboard to keep the uh, glue from spraying inside. All right, so I have all the openings covered now. AC's covered, skylight's covered. Rear vent is covered, and of course, the bathroom's covered. Hello. All right, so the next step is gonna to be to blow this roof clean, which is why I wanted to put cover, so I don't wanna blow all the stuff into the RV itself. Also, specializing in that channel down there. using a high-tech Harbor Freight spray gun. Okay. All right, and that's all glued up. Okay, my pointer set. Now I just add some pressure universally mark it for the vent hole and then just do that eight more times all the way down but it's bonded really well now I'll get you guys set up here in a second um, basically like I said glue both surfaces and roll it down I've already started this one we'll do it one at a time 
You can see the uh, channels on this one. No framing whatsoever. It's not hidden in there, I swear. Right, Chad? No hiding steel. No hiding steel, especially because right under here where you can see a nice little crack right there is the AC duct about a half inch down in the foam. Why are you just standing there? Get to work. Ah! Yeah, so we just had uh, two cut pieces. We go from there to there so the next seam doesn't uh, land on the seam of the styrofoam. And then one more back here. I do have to put the metal underneath there. So this is the metal that came off. Winnebago uses that underneath the loo on, and then you have screws that can hold on to a piece of metal. This is a pretty thick gauged galvanized steel. And then on this one, they actually did give a plate for the ladder, but you'll notice three holes on that one but only two on there so now I know where the whole ladder is gonna go now I can know where that's gonna go a little bit better all right so I'm yeah. gonna put that right there there and look at that definitely will land on the ladder right, so that one's down and all the metals down so now nice and secured it's incredibly strong how uh, a little piece of sheet metal underneath the paneling that's glued down how strong it is wouldn't you say Micah great job boys you don't think that that's incredibly strong for a piece of sheet metal underneath Lou on? Yes. It's weird how strong it can be. Strong Chad doesn't. Strong Chad's like nonplussed. Bull? What? Strong like bull? A small bull. Okay. I'm gonna call this the last piece. 
because I can. If it wasn't true, I couldn't say it. It's true. All right, Polo. Gracias. De nada, compa. Well, I wouldn't call it new because that's too high of a standard, right? All right, so at least this is one thing less out of the way. No more holes in there. Yeah, I'm much happier with that. So, you have to cut off that length on each side. We just did the chalk line on that. Chalk line on that side. Then it's absolutely vital on this one. We find the center line completely. Because I know a secret about the phylon that I need to share with you guys. Back side of the new one inch eight, the back, both, both the one eighth. What are you doing? Oh, I thought you were putting it in. <laughs> 